Hello and welcome. My name is Bertrand. Today I'm going to walk you through how to ingest a PDF file into a vector database. This video is a companion to my blog post talking about the difference between vector databases and graph databases in the context of retrieval augmented generation or RAC. While the blog allowed me to dive deep into those differences, I feel it would be good to provide the Reader's Digest version in the form of a recorded demo. In the blog, I also look at graph database, so I have recorded a similar demo, but with a graph database. In this demo, I will walk you through how to take a PDF file, ingest it into a vector database, and then query its content using natural language queries. And as my guinea pig, I'm going to use the PowerEdge R760XA spec sheet. Let's dive into it by looking at the needed software packages for the demo. As with everything to do with AI, I will be using Python and a variety of Python modules. So pip will be needed to install those modules. Therefore, I need to install pip. I will also use another module called Tika, which takes a PDF and extracts the text from it. Tika requires Java, so I need to install the JRE and JDK. As I'm using Ubuntu, this is what the command looks like. Let's run it. How long is it going to take to install all of those will really depend on the machine you are running it on. But it shouldn't take more than a few minutes, as there is a fair bit to be installed. Once all of this is installed, I can use my newly installed pip to load the, to load the required Python module, which are Tika, OpenAI, LangChain, Sentence Transformers, and ChromaDB. Sentence Transformers is used to create embedding and ChromaDB will be my vector database. There are lots of other options available to do this out there, but they those have a solid documentation and tutorials behind them, which is why I've chosen them. Makes it easy, really. So let's install those. Again, I, this will take a while. Once the command completes, I will have everything I need to do the demo. By the way, you might see some warning that can safely be ignored. Now that this is done, let's get to the demo and open Python. First, let's import everything we need, which is the parser from the Tiki module. And then from LangChain, we need the, the text splitter, the hugging face embedding, and the Chroma vector DB. Once I've imported everything, let's extract the text from the PDF file using Tika. For this, I leverage the Tika parser I've imported and fit it to the PDF and fitted the PDF file. Once the parser finishes, my variable called text contains the extracted text. The result of the Tika parser is a dictionary. So let's check the content that was extracted. I just need to look at the value associated with the key called content in my text dictionary. Sure enough, here is the text from the PDF. Next, I need to split my text into smaller chunks to calculate the embeddings for it. It is possible to fit an entire document, but for performance reason, it is usually better to split it. To do this, I need to create a text splitter by leveraging the LangChain character text splitter module. Here, I'm asking the splitter to create chunks of 1,000 characters each and overlap each chunk by 200 characters. Once I've created my splitter, I can then use it to split my extracted text. I store the return chunks in my chunks database, in my chunks variable, sorry. Normally, I wouldn't need to do the next step, which is to create the embeddings for each of the chunks as the LangChain module for ChromaDB does this automatically, as I'll show later. But I thought it'd be a good, a good idea to show what embeddings look like. So let's create my embeddings. Embeddings are a vector representation of the content of each chunks and are what is being stored in the vector DB. For this, I'm building a model by leveraging the hugging face, a hugging face embeddings module. It leverages an LLM to create the embeddings. There are lots of options for this, but I've been getting good results with mini LM. So I chose that one. And as a bonus point, it can also run on my CPU instead of requiring a GPU. So it makes it easy. Once my model is created, I extract the page content for each of my chunks, store those into my chunks underscore text variable, and feed that to my model. This will return the embeddings created, created from the text of each chunk. I can see that I have 11 embeddings, and I can check the value of the first embedding. As we can see, 
it is just a very large array of numbers, which is called a vector. That vector is what's being stored in the vector database. As I've said, Chroma DB does this automatically. So all I need to do is to initialize the Chroma DB with the chunks I created for my document and with the model I created to calculate the embedding. And then Chroma will do automatically everything. Once I run this command, I've effectively stored my PDF file into my vector DB and I can now query it. So let's create a query. Here I'm asking how many PCI slots does the R760XA have? Obviously that information is contained in a spec sheet. Running a query against a vector database means doing a similarity search, which is calculating the shortest distance between the vector of my query and any vector stored in the database. Meaning that Chroma DB will iterate through all of the vectors stored and calculate the distance between each of them and the vector of my query. It will then return the vectors with the shortest distance. Here, the results are returning to the my doc variable. If I look at the value of docs, it contains extracts from the overall document that are relevant to my query. In particular, I can see that it includes the relevant information to answer my query. One thing worth noting, though, is that the document contain is that docs sorry contains multiple chunks of text. If I only look at the first return chunks, I can see that it only contains part of the information. And that is the challenge with chunking and why overlap is so important, because it, it can avoid that. The information required to answer a query might be spread across multiple chunks. Now let's dive into one of the challenges with vector database, which is that no matter what the query is, it will always return the vector with the shortest distance. Even if that vector has nothing to do with the original query, they will always have a vector that has the shortest distance. So let's illustrate this. For instance, let's ask my database containing only the spec sheet of the Powers, PowerEdge R760XA, who the president of the United States is. Lo and behold, some of the vectors are have the shortest distance. But let's take a look at what got returned. Indeed, it returned something, but it doesn't have any relevance to the original query. So if you're building a RAG based on vector database, that is the one thing to be aware of, is that it will always return something, no matter the relevance. Anyway, here's a quick demo of the end-to-end -end workflow to ingest a PDF file into a vector database. My name is Bertrand, and thank you for watching.